I'm the editor-in-chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Global Foundry with Dave Eggleston who's going to talk about what type of non volatile memory is best for MCUs. Dave, as we get into uh, edge devices and MCUs start showing up uh, for IoT, for a lot of other uh, devices that we didn't have before, what's the challenge that people are starting to face on where they, what kind of memory they use. Do they actually embed it? Do they create a separate type of system and package, I guess with NorFlash, right? That's correct. They could use NorFlash as an option. So let's talk about the differences between having an embedded NVM or having an external NVM and how you would choose for your microcontroller or for your SOC. So that's going to be the comparison of do I take and invest in embedded NVM where I have my logic built in the chip and then I also have my embedded NVM built in the chip. Now this has a certain adder in cost over and above the wafer cost of just a logic process. That cost adder can be somewhere in the range of 20% to 30% more cost in the wafer and does it make sense for your application? Another option here is to go with system in a package. System in a package, you would have your logic chip built only on a logic process, no extra cost adder. However, you would pay for an external flash chip, such as NorFlash, and then you would bond it together or put some sort of connectivity together between the logic device and the NVM. So power becomes a big issue here, right? Power consumption in particular. Which one is better? And if you're going into a battery-powered environment, like IoT definitely is, how much power you consume is going to be one of the key things. Now, I wear a fitness tracker. I wear it all the time. One of the things I like about my fitness tracker is I only have to charge it up about once a week or once every two weeks. Now some other devices you wear on your wrist consume a lot more power and you have to charge it up maybe every night. So that's some of the trade-offs and as wearable devices become more and more popular or we're using batteries for things that are expected to last a long time such as video surveillance in hard to reach places, power consumption is going to be a key consideration. Getting back to the NVM, embedded NVM versus external, we do know that power consumption is superior for the embedded NVM device. This is for a couple of reasons. One is that we don't have to power the interface between the logic device and the memory chip. So we save quite a bit of power in not powering those big IOs. One of the considerations that you have when you buy one of these devices is how quickly does it come on? How quickly do you need it to come on? And, and that's been a, a trade-off for quite a while. If you think about backup cameras on cars, for example, they've got to come on immediately. Other devices don't necessarily. Sure. What does that do for the power for the, your, your choice of memory? And I'm going to keep talking about the fitness tracker here because that's one that truly is a normally off device. We're seeing more and more of these devices that go not only to sleep, they fully power down in between except for a small little watchdog or a sensor that when you wake up to coming active quickly is incredibly important. So power up time is another consideration. If you can tolerate a longer power up time then maybe the system in a package with NorFlash is okay for you because in that case you have to wake up, you have to go fetch code from the flash externally using that higher power I.O. Then you have to pull the data in into your SRAM, local SRAM, and execute out of it. So now you can see why for a fitness tracker, why embedded NVM is superior. Because it sits right there in the chip, we don't have to go fetch it, we can actually execute directly out of the embedded NVM. Also the embedded NVM macros are often 64-bit wide buses or 128-bit wide buses, so we can bring in a lot of data in one cycle. The external NOR flash often is a by 4 or by 8 bus in order to keep the power consumption down on the IOs. So we can only bring a little bit of data in at a time. So again, for power up time, what, if you want something that's measured in the single digit microseconds, then embedded NVM is going to be your choice. 
Related to that is speed, because power up time is a piece of that, but the overall performance of this is how fast you can get data in and out too, right? That's true, and the, again, the wider bus that you have on embedded NVM, even once you're operating, gives you those chunks of data at a faster rate than going external. Now, in the case of a lot of devices that use SIP, what they do is they'll fetch all that data during the power up time, bring it into SRAM, and then execute directly out of the SRAM. So it depends on if you want to shadow in SRAM. If you're shadowing in SRAM, then SIP is going to be your superior solution. However, you now have the added cost of shadowing in SRAM. In other words, you've paid for the memory external, and then you've also paid for additional XRAM insi SRAM inside to be due to the shadowing. So if you want to have that speed internal, SIP could be a valuable approach. However, when coupled with power up time and fastest speed just from with the bus, if I want to do an execute in place architecture, then in this case, ENVM is going to be my better choice. So again, you need to know your application and you need to understand this relationship between power up time and ongoing speed and whether or not you can afford that extra SRAM in your logic chip. As more devices connected and we're thinking potentially trillions of devices get connected, security becomes a much bigger issue. Where does memory fit into this? Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the most common questions we have about IoT because I think that's a, a concern we all have is how hackable it could be. And in this case, because the NVM is embedded directly in the base silicon, the designer has complete control. The SOC and MCU designer has complete control over how that it can be uh, reverse engineered and how to mask it from reverse engineering. In the case of buying a chip external from a NorFlash vendor, you have no control over that. It has a data sheet which is publicly available. Somebody could rip open your package, could access that external flash device and actually read out the data that's in there. So you really don't have any security that's natively in that. So that's a case where embedded NVM is going to be your preferred solution for security. What are the other changes that come with some of the uh, applications that we're talking about here, some of the new applications, is re reliability, which is basically quality over time. In the past, in the mobile world, in the computer world, you change out your computer or your mobile phone every couple of years, and they would be built for high performance. As we move forward into industrial settings, into some of the IoT applications, they're supposed to be around for, what, 10, 15 years? Even longer. Uh, one of the facts is that from one of our automotive customers, we have a spec for 50-year data retention. Why 50 years? I asked that question because automobiles themselves rarely last for 50 years. I didn't think about it, but they said it's because of the parts. We manufacture parts and put them on the shelf that somebody might pull it from the shelf 10, 20 years from now and expect it to work for that period of time. So reliability is an essential element. Um, in this case, the specs for embedded NVM are much tougher in terms of temperature, in terms of data retention, than the NorFlash. So the standalone NorFlash has not really gone after those industrial and automotive markets as much as the embedded NVM supplier. So this is a case where embedded NVM is engineered from the beginning in Global Foundry's case to meet automotive grade one and possibly even automotive grade zero, the highest level of reliability required in the toughest industry. So I think this is a case where, again, you're going to get the reliability along with the security from embedding that device. As we get out to the edge, one of the key uh, variables there is cost. Which one's cheaper? And that's a great question. And this is probably where there's the biggest confusion in the industry. As you see, I've kind of indicated a lot of the advantages of ENVM, but often it's considered that SIP is always the lowest cost. And I'm going to show you uh, some examples, and this is taken directly from our data, internal to GF, as well as working with our customers to find the right solution for them. So let's talk about cost, but before we go into cost itself, I just want to bring up the assumptions that we're going to make. One thing I pointed out on speed was in order to get fast speed operation out of SIP, you would want to include an SRAM size, which is equivalent 
to your external flash in order that that uh, increases your amount of SRAM a lot. However, I'd like to show you this analysis without increasing SRAM size. So in other words, what we're going to do for our analysis is we're going to assume the ideal case for SIP, which is no extra SRAM. In other words, the logic is identical between the external flash case and the embedded NVM case. So this is best case for SIP. Now that being said, let's go to a chart which comes directly from it and let me explain the chart. So what we've done is we've taken a relative cost and again what this is taken from actual data for producing wafers inside GF plus typical sizes for MCUs and looking at the assembly cost, looking at the yield differences, so a lot of factors are built in here. So most of the mainstream on IoT is, is what, 40 nanometers? It's probably going to go down in the future though. The, all, all estimates point to much more advanced nodes as we start moving into uh, edge devices that are much more sophisticated. What changes on the cost here? Yeah, sure, and again, good question. So let me explain the chart. And what we've done is we've taken the relative cost and we've started with a baseline of 40 nanometer system in package. In other words, this is our logic device with an external flash device and comparing all the costs, assembly cost, yield, test, everything included. So that's our baseline here. And then what we've done is the blue line here for 40 nanometer and 40 nanometer now is the most popular process ramping for 32 bit MCUs, which is the highest volume MCU business these days and the one we see being widely used for IoT and automotive electronics. So with an embedded NVM at 2 megabits we start at about a 25 percent lower cost than SIP. Now that may be a surprise to people but I think once you add up the size and the extra uh, packaging and all of that, that's where there's quite a difference and SIP is not the lowest cost solution embedded is. Then as we go to four, eight, and then 16 megabits, it's about at 16 megabits that we get a crossover. And what we see is at 40 nanometer, 16 megabits embedded, maybe you would buy that because that's the best for all the other reasons power speed reliability but above that as you get to 32 megabits or beyond at 40 nanometers then SIP becomes a lower cost option especially using the ideal case going all the way to the extreme which is 128 megabits SIP is definitely a better option and tends to saturate where the embedded NVM is about 30% uh, more expensive than the SIP. So that's the 40 nanometer case. As we look ahead to 22 nanometers, we see something that's somewhat similar. First of all, the dotted line is our 22 nanometer SIP. Notice that, as especially as we get to the larger densities of NVM, 22 nanometers is showing about a 20% lower cost than 40 nanometers. So already you're seeing the benefits of scaling in getting to lower cost as you get to the bigger chip sizes that are included in this model. When we compare the embedded NVM, that also starts off less expensive than our SIP. And then the crossover point at 22 nanometers becomes 32 megabit. So to sum this up, if you have an NVM density that's going to be greater than 32 megabit, then you probably do want to use a SIP. That would be your lowest cost option and that would be the way to go. However, if you're at 32 megabits or 16 megabits and below, depending on which process you want, then for this whole range, then embedded NVM does become even the, the lowest cost solution with all the advantages we talked about for power, reliability, and security. Do these trend lines change at all as we move forward, as we start getting more sophisticated devices, potentially new materials? Yeah, that could be the case. And in this case, we're talking about 40 nanometer. And in our case, the embedded NVM here is E-flash. 
and E flash at the more advanced nodes is getting difficult to scale, difficult to bring the cost down. As we look ahead to 22 nanometers, the Global Foundry's offering, plus offerings from our Foundry competitors, are moving to an embedded NVM technology which is based on magnetics, which is EMRAM. Now that's being uh, pursued by ourselves and two different foundry competitors in the 2x nanometer range, being 28 or 22. So the embedded NVM technology is changing, but the fundamentals of how it compares versus a SIP approach is not changing. That this is the crossover point that you want to target, and if you're going for the lower densities, lower than 32, you definitely want embedded NVM. David Eggleston, thanks for a great explanation. All right, thank you very much, Ed.